Does anybody know what this is? This is a portrait of the great revival at Cane Ridge, Kentucky that was in the late 1700s or early 1800s. And I was there. Okay, I was there before I got off my horse with no name and came here today. I was there. Can you imagine 25,000 people gathering in one spot? Could you imagine 25,000 people in your fancy motor cars all lined up down Mount Olive Road and boats out there on the river? 25,000 people gathered in one spot. And this was in the early 1800s. That's a lot of people. 25,000. Now, the city of Lexington had 1,000 people, just to give you perspective at that time. That is a massive amount of people. This area of Cane Ridge, also the Cumberland Gap, where you get the name, also in Tennessee, was the gateway to the West at the time. The Scott Irish people migrating from Scotland. Really, Scott Irish are actually Scottish that stayed in Ireland, Northern Ireland, just for a brief period of time, maybe a generation, and then came to America. So we have Scott Irish people that immigrated to the uh, Americas. And they went right through this area known as the Cumberland Gap. And this particular area in the early 1800s had the right ingredients for a spiritual awakening. And it was a big spiritual awakening. An outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Thousands and thousands of souls were saved at this one spot in Kentucky. And I'm going to tell you what, I was there. It would make your Benny Hinn and TBN look like a picnic. Let me tell you what. There was a bunch of people that were saved during this time. The Cumberland Presbyterian Church was born right there with a missionary spirit like no other. I'm going to give you a quick background on that today. It all started with this sacramental meeting with the Presbyterian Church. So all these people were slain in the spirit, speaking in tongues and dancing around in the Lord. It was an amazing thing. I can only imagine that it was almost like maybe your Woodstock in a way. Maybe it was Woodstock for Jesus is what it was back then. Woodstock for Jesus. Soon men and women all started to come down and say, you know what? I'm called to preach. I'm called to preach. I want to be a preacher. How do I become a preacher? So this small band of Presbyterian pioneers, new thinking Presbyterians at the time, all decided that the West was expanding really fast. It was expanding really, really fast. And they needed to send missionaries out onto the frontier to preach the gospel. This hat right here, and you can make it all preacher right? I can do this right here. And I can walk in and say, how you doing, sir? You okay today? God bless you. But then, then I take my hat up like this and say, come on, boy, get out of my way. <laughs> you never know what I'm going to do on the frontier now. It's a dangerous place out there. But you know what? Every bit of that happened east of the Mississippi River. All of it was east of the Mississippi River. Let me share this with you this morning. Because I'm going to tell you this. At the time, nobody, and I mean nobody, went across that river right there. Nobody went to that colony in Louisiana, which was owned by France. Notice during that time, the Northwest Territory was up there, present day Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, Minnesota. Nobody stepped foot across that river. Why is that? Because it was dangerous. It was dangerous. Hostile Indians, all kinds of thugs and renegades and everything else. It was a rough and tumble West Frontier is exactly what it was. And I'm going to tell you what, the Indians were actually nice compared to the other people that we ran across. It was unbelievable. Lawlessness. Could you imagine today, what's it called, Mr. Blankenship? Could you imagine today going into, what's it called, I ISIS? ISIS, is that it? Is that what I read in one of y'all's publications? I don't trust anybody that has an organization that stutters. ISIS, ISIS? Could you imagine yourself today going into that country to see ISIS or even this North Korea, the sky? Could you imagine yourself going in there today? That's what it was like for these people to cross that river in this territory. 
But that's exactly what they did. It was dangerous to cross the river. So, but in 1811, the very first Protestant sermon was preached right here at Crystal Hill in Arkansas. The very first one. Y'all think about that. The very first one. And that was preached by a missionary named John Callahan. And all the rest of the country was wide open for the gospel of Jesus Christ at the time. And that's exactly what the Cumberlands did. The Cumberland Presbyterian Church went forward all the way up the Oregon Trail. The first ones up the Oregon Trail planted a church. Down into California before the gold rush, planted a church. First Protestants to do that. Right before the gold rush. And it was all because of this right here. A revival that started in Kentucky. Yes, sir, I'm proud to be a Cumberland Presbyterian. I am. I am proud to be one. Cumberlands were the first to ordain African Americans in this country. The first to ordain women in this country. And we are missionaries. What's so important about Jehoiada is that he stayed right here. He stayed here. He didn't do like the other missionaries did. He didn't go further west. He did something different. He stayed right here in this place called Mount Olive. Some people and perhaps the most are the ones that followed the Great Commission by building a community. And that's what he did. He stayed here and built this almost 200 year old church where you find people are today. I'm going to leave you with this right here. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on that house but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. You are here today a part of this rock and it was founded upon the rock the rock of Jesus Christ. So Jehoiada come over here from Kentucky after the, the war and I believe he came over here not just seeking you know, fam or seeking a place for his family as a farmer and business and building that very important road that he did for Sam Houston that military road I believe he came here to plant this church it's very important to remember this family but everyone else and what they've done here this whole thing is not about the Cumberland Presbyterian Church. It is about the Great Commission of Jesus Christ. That's exactly what it's about, and that's exactly what he did. Welcome home. Welcome to your rock called Mount Olive. It's good to be back home again. Sometimes this old farm feels like Yes, and it's good to be back home again. And as all the news to tell him how you spend your time, what's the latest?